Hello, Albert Fish. I am Katarina Fina, and I will be interviewing you today. Um, could you please describe to me your childhood, any like friends, schooling, family, and like relationships? My childhood consisted mainly of abuse and neglect. My father was 43 years older than my mother, and I was the youngest of four children, so I was neglected. My father was a riverboat captain, but died on October 16, 1875. My mom then put me into St. John's Orphanage where I was abused. I endured so much abuse that I began to enjoy it. In 1882, my mother got a job and then was able to take me out of the orphanage. There was also a lot of mental illness in my family. My uncle was diagnosed with mania and the rest of my family also had a history of mental illness, such as one of my brothers was even confined in a mental hospital and my mother experienced visual hallucinations. When I was 12, I made a friend and he introduced me into drinking pee and eating poop. Interesting. Um, looking back now, are there specific events that you can remember that may have contributed to you committing these crimes? Um, <clears throat> were there any indicators of like, any obsessions or um, <laughs> um, like fires, animal cruelty, anything like that? Looking back, I believe that my family's history of mental illness was maybe the first indicator of me becoming a murderer. Later in my life, I went to this waxwork machine where I saw a bisection of the penis and was fascinated by it. It was at this point where I became obsessed with sexual mutilation. When I started to get auditory hallucinations, I began self-harm and even embedded 29 needles in my groin and abdomen. I would also hit myself with a nail-studded paddle and would insert wool coated in lighter fluid into my anus and then would set it on fire. I later developed an obsession with cannibalism too. Um, now, what is the highest level of ed education that you received? Did you graduate high school or college? I had very little formal education and grew up learning mostly with my hands rather than my brains. I did not go to college or get much higher level schooling. <clears throat> oh, can you give us a description of your work history? In 1890, when I moved to New York, I became a prostitute and then began raping young boys. In 1898, I worked as a house painter but continued my obsession with raping young boys. Oh, oh, well, prior to the murders, would you say you had a healthy social life? Were you married with children? Did you live alone, have friends, anything? In 1890, I moved to New York City, and later my mom set me up with an arranged marriage. Her name was Anna Mary Hoffman and was nine years younger than me. We had six children together. I did not have any close friends. In 18, sorry, in 1917, my wife left me for another man, and I was left to raise six children by myself. She also took most of every possession that I owned, and I was left in poverty. Can you explain to us the first time you killed? Who were your victims? Why did you select them and where and how did it happen? What was your motivation? The first person I killed was a child who I mutilated and tortured. From there on, I decided children would remain my victims because they are easy targets to molest and kill. I used something called implements of hell, which consist of my meat cleaver, a butcher knife, and a saw. In the end, I only confessed to killing about 100 people, which was within 40 years of my life. Were you ever diagnosed with a mental disorder? If so, did you ever receive treatment? I've been in and out of mental institutions throughout my life where doctors told me that I had an abnormal personality. They told me I have antisocial personality disorder and that they consider me a psychopath. Um. <clears throat> Criminal p profilers believe that many serial killers leave a signature at their crime scene. Can you explain yours? Well, I usually have a process with all my victims. I start out with torture and then I rape them. At the end, I like to cut up my victims and cook up a nice meal with it. Do you know why you needed to do this? I believe God ordered me to torture and castrate boys. And let me tell you, God is never wrong. I really don't think that I've done anything wrong. Um. Can you describe how you were eventually captured? What specific evidence was used to lead your arrest? There was a six year investigation into the murder of Grace Budd, which was one of my victims. Eventually, I sent Miss Budd an anonymous letter to explain details of how I stripped and strangled the daughter, as well as how I cut up the body and ate her. Unfortunately, the police tracked the letter back to me and I was immediately arrested. Thereafter, I confessed to killing Grace Bud and several hundred other children too. Did you eventually go to trial or did you take a plea bargain? Um, and were you sentenced to life in prison or did you get the death penalty? 
Well, I did go through a trial where I pled innocent by the reason of insanity. I told the court I had been hearing voices and that they told me to kill children. Though after 10 days, the jury decided that I was sane but guilty. I received the death penalty by electrocution, but I'm actually quite excited. I will be electrocuted at Sing Sing Prison on January 16, 1936, not too long from now.